Hello, everybody. My name is Luke Marr, and this is Hot Mode. And today on Hot Mode, we are coming to you with your Vanity Fair Oscars after party red carpet fashion. It's not really a rose because these ones are usually much, much better. And review. I do want to do a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. There are going to be two parts of this video because there were like 80 looks that we had to discuss. Part one is going to have some pretty solid faves. Billie Eilish, Chloe and Halle Bailey, Emma Chamberlain, Jennifer Coolidge, Hunter Schaefer. There's a bunch of people to discuss. We'll end it off with Kaya Gerber and Austin Butler. And then we'll begin it and pick it up in part two in the next video with Kendall Jenner and get through the rest of the list. So don't worry, it is coming. I promise there's a lot to discuss. Let's get into the lot to discuss. First up, we have Adwa Aboa, and she is wearing Loewe. Now, this is a look, I believe, from the fall 2023 Ready to Wear collection. A lot about anthuriums, the flower. So we can see that there are two white faux anthuriums with little green and white stomas. I didn't really do well in plant biology, to be honest. It was really my most hated thing in the world. But we can see that she's also wearing a strapless white opaque bustier, and then what looks like, it's not actually sheer, but more of a off-white, oat mealy colored skirt falls right below the hips and is much more flowy whereas the opaque white bouste is much more stiff looking. I'll be honest from the hip area up I love it. I like the anthurium. I think it's fun. I love Jonathan Anderson being weird and kooky and crazy and sort of creating you know the anthurium is like two sort of bust area coverings but I think from the skirt situation, it feels very discombobulated. It doesn't really make all that much sense with the rest of the dress. And in reality, I think it takes you out of the fantasy of beautiful, stark, gorgeous, white, anthurium, extravaganza. Top up, great. Bottom down. Not great. Next up, we have Alexandria Daddario, and she is wearing Alexandre Vautier, which consists of this black sequin look. It's pretty much a fitted gown that is floor length and fits quite nicely around the hips, the waist, and tapers down as we get towards the bottom of the hem. But the thing that's kind of like of intrigue is the sleeves. They're kind of like bat sleeves. They're big, they're sort of bold, but again, they taper when we get towards the cuff area. I'll be honest, it's very sort of 80s. It's very sort of simplistic, except for the fact that it's black sequins that are reflective and shiny. I think the silhouette does sort of have a very powerful sort of upper area, which to me reads very 80s and is a very Alexandre Vautier style and aesthetic that hits close to home and is very much a part of the house codes. So I'll be honest, I think it's a little bit blah, a little bit boring, a little bit banal. I think for the Vanity Fair, after party, we want excitement and intrigue and drama and movement and eleganza. And I feel like there are Alexandre Vautier looks that most definitely could give that. This is just not one of those. This is more of a late night with Stephen Colbert, not giving me life at the Vanity Fair. That's not to knock Stephen Colbert. Just want to put it out there. Big fan. Huge. Seems like a lovely man. The other crazy thing that I learned, I don't know if I should say this, but like Stephen Colbert's wife was a Zach Posen client when I interned there. I'm not allowed to say that, but like... That indicates taste to me. Next up, we have Alton Mason wearing a custom Valentino look. So we can see that this is a full red look. It pretty much consists of a U-shaped plunge tank top that is sheer for the most part in the infrastructural manner, but there is an opaque sort of U that creates that dramatic plunge effect and really stands out, which, listen, I like it. I don't love it. I think that there's some fit issues, which I understand is a tank top, so it's obviously going to be a little bit loosey-goosey, but it's also Valentino Haute Couture, so like, it should have fit a little bit better. Yeah, I believe so. Listen, as for the pants, I think they're good. I think they're fun. I think they're a little bit baggy, but they obviously fit. And then the red tabby, I'm okay with. I feel like Alt Mason loves a tabby boot, and I also love a tabby boot, so like, I'm okay with this. And I think that the red opera gloves plays into the leather of the tabby. And so in that context, I am okay. I also think that the opaque sort of U fabric at the top fits in with the pant. I'm into this. It's fun. It's different. It's cool. It's exciting. It's something we don't really see all that much. And like, I would like those pants. So sold. Next up is Ana de Armas. And like, ugh, girl, I love this. This is what I've been asking for for literally the past three months. This is a custom Louis Vuitton dress. It is a sheer sequined gown that in reality, in my opinion, looks to me like a Tiffany lamp. I don't know if that's the Louis Vuitton team being like, 
we own Tiffany & Co. Hence, we can make Tiffany lamp dresses if we want. I just have to say that I love the design of it. It looks like, you know, a Tiffany lamp that you would find whether it's in the Met or a recreation you might find on your grandmother's kitchen table. I've seen both. I love the design of it. It feels old school. It feels kind of Art nouveau e to me a little bit. There's just something whimsical and bohemian about it, but at the same time, the fact that it looks like we're looking at panels of glass and, you know, stained glass. Like, I just love the top with the little lines that go through. I, like, I really think this is like a great design. I don't think that I've ever really seen a dress that recreates a sort of Tiffany lamp or stained glass design like this. Shout out to the Louis Vuitton team because this is major. Even the way that the darts sort of run through but they don't really take away from the actual design. Like I just think that they did a fantastic job. Kudos to Ana de Armas for going for it and allowing herself to be the vessel for this experience. Very happy. So next up we have Andrew Garfield and he is wearing Valentino now. He is doing a red suit jacket, a blue shirt, a black tie, black pant, black shoe. I'm pretty positive that like maybe the tie element is a reference to a recent Valentino collection, the most recent Valentino collection, which was literally titled Black Tie. A red jacket, blue shirt, black tie. It just doesn't have black pants. So I'm pretty positive this is like a reference to the most recent collection. I don't mind it. I don't mind the look. I think again for press tour, press junket, day out, sitting down, at, again, a talk show. It's like, I think that would be great. I think this would be a wonderful look. And I do think that it, it's nice. It's smart. I think the red really pops against the blue. I just feel like though they're kind of more exciting Valentino looks that we could have went for and I feel like the Vanity Fair after party really is the time to like do fashion you know what I mean like it's to me almost like the secondary Met Gala it's this moment where it's like just go and turn it out and I understand it's an after party so like why would I want to go and turn it out but like it's for me you turn it out for me because you didn't turn it out at the Oscars so that's why that's the reason because. Next up we have Angela Bassett wearing a custom Moschino creation. It is an off the shoulder red draped bustier with big front bow. I like the top. I like the bustier. I like the off the shoulder cut of it. Honestly, I think the shawl sort of element is really, really nice. The bow, I understand it. I think that the front bow is probably a reference to Yves Saint Laurent's very iconic back pink bow. What I don't love is the pant. I just don't know if the pant was the right moment. I think that the bow looks like a peplum to a degree from afar and I think that it throws off the shape when you add a pant in there. I just don't think the pant is the moment. I also just don't think like a front bow over the crotch area also is super great in the moment and I just feel like Angela Bassett she deserved better. These pants I feel like is only adding insult to injury in this moment. The shoe is fine it's whatever I don't love it but again like with the pant I just don't think it works. I think if maybe this pant had been like a wide leg pant it could have been better. One that like covered that shoe would have also helped. I just think that it would have added sort of stature but I think the way that they're tailored. The length of them is awkward and weird. And the fact that they're kind of baggy is also kind of awkward and weird, but they're not super duper baggy. Like it's just, it's a strange thing. And I just feel like it looks like a weird peplum toddler play date kind of look from the waist below. Whereas up top, it ruins what is otherwise honestly like a really beautiful silhouette that I think should have been followed in a much more regal sense. And so I am sad. Next we have Anak Yai wearing Marc Jacobs. And this, I believe, is a look from the most recent Marc Jacobs collection. Wrinkled silk that is off the shoulder to a degree. And I believe that that collection was a reference to Vivian Westwood. And to be honest, I like the dress. I like the fact that at the waist it nips in. We have sort of a bulge at the shoulder kind of area. We have a bulge at the hip. And even the way that at the back, it seems like there's a little bit of a flare in the back of this dress. I like it. What I do think is missing is the runway styling, i.e. if you get the chance to wear a Kiki boot by Marc Jacobs, you take that and you run with it. I'm not saying that you had to wear the gloves that were on the runway, but like the Kiki boot I think really makes a look. And listen, wear it for the carpet, take them off, and give them to a stylist to do the returns tomorrow. Just for the carpet. Wear the Kiki boot. It's a great boot. It's super fun. It's super exciting. It is a platform and it happened and not that a knock guy needs that she really doesn't i mean she is stunning like in person she is stunning but i just wish we had the boot i really do i just wish we had like a little tiny element of 
the boot. Besides that, I do really like the dress. I think it's really beautiful. The crinkle wrinkle fabric is fun. Marc Jacobs, in my opinion, is referencing Mucha Prada here. And I, you know, I, I get that. I appreciate that. I think Marc references Mucha a lot. The styling could have brought it up a little bit. But besides that, I do love the dress. Next up, we have Ariana DeBose, and she is wearing Moschino. Now, I believe that this is a custom creation. It's pretty much a sheer black blazer and wide leg pant that has a rose motif that runs in a sort of trellis composition up and down the actual look. Listen, I don't hate it. I just don't love it. I don't think it's really super duper memorable. I guess the thing that I'm confused about with a lot of these Moschino looks, I understand that they're custom. I get it. It makes sense. And I feel like we've been seeing a lot of custom Moschino on the carpet. I'm just wondering, like, where is the fun, crazy, over-the-top shit that makes one say, oh my god, Moschino, I'm so happy we have the camp going on. It just feels a little bit blah, I, and I don't really understand that element of it. It just feels unmemorable, and I don't think that unmemorable is at all. It's an antonym to me, to Moschino as a brand. I'm kind of lost at just the simplicity, the unremarkability of this look. And also I hate that necklace. So Ariana DeBose, you're doing the thing. You are my woman king, but like the look is not enough. Next up, we have Billie Eilish, who is wearing Rick Owens. I believe that this is a look from a recent Rick Owens collection. And honestly, I feel like we haven't seen Billie in like a hot minute on the carpet. I love this. I think it's fantastic. I think it's chic. I think it's elegant. I think it's ethereal. I think that she just did a great job. Billie is always one to do bulbous shape, something that's very sort of voluminous and large and exaggerated in terms of silhouette. And I think that this Rick Owens look is a perfect example of that. At the same time, we've also seen Billy sort of over the years adapt from having a much more athleisure sort of style to something that's a little bit more formal and becoming a little bit more elegant and eloquent and things like that. And honestly, I think this look is a great example of Billy doing what Billy wants to do and still sort of keeping in touch with what she feels is her own personal aesthetic. So I'm not exactly sure what the look necessarily is because from the runway images, we can see that it actually might be sort of like a tank top style dress, which fits in very much so with Rick Owens and going back to the sort of idea of Billy doing athleisure, it also fits in with what she sort of does very, very well. Although I believe that there might actually be a dress underneath because I think that the neckline here is different on Billy's look than it is on the actual Rick look. It looks to be more of like a dress sort of A fabric and B I can see like seams and darts and boning and things like that that sort of lead me to believe it's much more formal underneath. What I can see also is this big sort of floof of fabric that's coming out it seems to be some sort of jacket. If we zoom in we can see that there's buttons and in reality it's almost like jacket coat that is made up of this netting or tool. I can't tell which one it exactly is but it does create this really amazing shape and I think that's the fun thing about Billy is whenever she comes out, she's trying to figure out a way to do what she wants to do and do it in a manner that's a little bit different, a little bit strange, a little bit new, a little bit avant-garde. And I think she's achieved that. I think this is Billy and the essence of her style. It's just done with big, large tool jacket over top and I'm kind of obsessed with it. I just think that she and her stylist are very, very smart. I think they understand what the aesthetic they're going for and they don't let anybody stop them. And also I love the fact that Billy now can sort of wear different designers like Rick Owens as well. So I'm very into it. Next up we have Camila Mendez and she is wearing Versace. Now this is a bandage style dress. It's a one sleeved multi wrap ruched experience. Personally, it's not for me. You know what I mean? Like I can just admit that out of the gate when I look at dresses like this, I just don't really think that they do much in terms of excitement. I don't think they do much in terms of sculpting the body. I think it's just like how many pieces of fabric can we move and groove and dissect and cut out and put in and say, ah, oh, fashion. Will I say that I think it would be much chicer if it had two sleeves and two sort of off the shoulder little wraparounds. I genuinely do. I think that it would have made it a little bit more elegant. It would have looked a little bit less Halloween mummy costume. I just think that there's a lot going on. We're pulling and we're stripping and we're wrapping and I just don't really get it. I think the collar area is a little bit chunky and a little bit strange and a little bit weird. I don't really love it. It's not for me. The fit is like, whatever, it's fine. It's okay. It should be okay because it's like a ruched dress. I don't get the toilet paper 
extravaganza going on. Next up, we have Cara Delevingne wearing Del Corre. And this, I think, is the way to do a wrapped, gathered fabric in terms of a gown that looks really elegant, can be asymmetrical, and feels chic and light and frothy and regal. This multi off the shoulder style is great because one part of this off the shoulder is chiffon that's wrapping around the actual bodice and, and then flows into a big long skirt. The other side is actually made up of fabric that looks similar to the exposed corset and boning that's underneath and that wraps on the other side. Feels like the dress is in motion. It feels like it's in movement. I love that for Cara Delevingne. I genuinely think she's a model. I think that most of these models that now sort of work and are around today, I know that Cara's not really a model anymore. She's more of an actress. But I just think that if you come from that world, you should understand how to sell a garment because that was your job. So I think that Cara honestly does really understand it. I think we've been seeing that a lot recently in her looks. She's really been delivering. I love the diagonal gathering of this dress. I love the way that it sort of sometimes is opaque and sometimes is very sheer. It feels natural, feels beautiful, and then it flows out into this big, beautiful skirt. Like, it's just, it's a really, really lovely look, and I, I think it's a great experiment in both deconstruction and also in fabric manipulation, and it's an ethereal look. Next up, we have Cardi B wearing Robert 1. Now, this is, I believe, a custom look. It seems to be a gathered bodice that wraps around into a scarf headpiece, and the headpiece, to a degree, actually covers all of Cardi's face. I believe it's like some sort of red, very sheer chiffon, which I think is fun. I think it's very rare that you see sort of like a headpiece or where fabric really sort of takes over the face as well. It's not something that we get a lot of. A lot of the time, celebrities want to do very clean and minimal, and they want their hair and their their face and their makeup to really be simplistic. And I think that we're hopefully moving out of an era of not having a headpiece involved. Like it's fun to have a headpiece. It adds to the look, it adds to the excitement, it's to the intrigue and the extravaganza. And you can always take it off later. Always take it off. And it's possible. For the rest of the dress, we can see that this big sort of ruched skirt flows out from around the lower waist area. It sort of cowls a little bit in the front. It has a little bit of a dip. And we can see that gathered, very tightly pleated bodice silk that's going on. We can see that there is a different differentiation between the silk on the bodice and the, the fabric of the actual skirt, which I don't really love, to be honest. I do think it takes us out of the extravaganza a little bit. I also feel like if there was ever a moment for Cardi to really like a fun, cool look, I think one of those like wine spilled styles or burnt cigarette look from that Robert One or Couture collection would have really been like, oh, <gasps> so that's my thoughts on it. I just think that there are more exciting and cool looks that Cardi could have went for. I think that this is kind of simple Robert one and I'm happy to see Robert one on the carpet but it's okay but it could be better. Next up we have Charlie XCX wearing Whiterhoft which is a bustier style that we can see and then also Anna Kiki which is this floor length skirt. Whiterhoft is a New York based brand and does a lot of corsetry so that's why you're seeing this really beautiful black silk corset with the boning. But I love the pairing of a two different designers. I feel like we don't really see that a lot and I think that here Charlie's done a great job of doing it because there's Anna Kiki looks like a skirt you would find at Spencer's and I don't mean that in an offensive way. I think that little sort of belt buckle element on the side of it really gives you small goth vibes. But instead of it being a shorter sort of skirt, in reality, the fact that it's floor length gives it much more of a oomph, a lot more of an appeal. I'm not saying it's the most exciting, most fun, most amazing look in the entire world. I just think that the styling of two different designers pieces together is something interesting and something we don't really see a lot. And it caught my eye and I wanted to also talk about mall goths, so. Thank you for your time. Next up, we have Charlotte Lawrence, who is wearing Saint Laurent. This is a fully smock bodice look. The smocking drops off around the mid thigh. Smocking, if you don't know, is where thread is put through fabric and then pulled sort of tightly, and that's what gives it that elasticy look, but also has a very sort of elasticy effect. It's very sort of stretchy, and those little sort of text elements you can see is the fabric sort of puckering because of the way that it's pulled, which I think is fun. I think it's cool. I think it's different. I think it's something that you don't really see a lot. And the fact that it's fully sheer, I also think is something you don't really see a lot, especially with smocking. Smocking is usually a little bit more homely, I would say. Maybe more of a conservative and old school traditional fabric technique. I think you see it a lot with like big voluminous dresses and you see it with things that have a lot of coverage of the body. So I think it's interesting to see it in a much more sheer, 
body con, body exposing context because there's a lot of body exposed. I apologize for the blurring that has to happen, but unfortunately, like, this is YouTube. We gotta do what we gotta do. What I will say is I love the gathering of the skirt. I think that it's perfect. I think it works. I think it allows both sort of elements to be well sort of shown. And I think the skirt also doesn't take away too, too much from the smocking going up up top. I think not wearing a sort of bra, I also appreciate. Like, I just think it's dedication to the look. It's dedication to the style. The black underwear, I think, is fine. I think it makes sense. I think it's kind of necessary. So I'm happy with it. Next up, we have Chloe and Halle Bailey, and they are wearing Maison Yeah Yeah. Now, let's talk about Chloe first. She is wearing this black, asymmetrical, one sleeve dress that is fully sequined. There's a lot of black sequins going on here. We can see that there is a little bit of a straight cut at the neckline, and in reality, it looks almost like a chunk of the dress was sort of cut out. I will say the fit of the dress is good. I'm not mad about it. I think that it comes in, it contours the body well. And then at the knee, we get a flurry of black feathers that sort of jut out and create a little bit of a mermaid silhouette and sort of trickle down and create a little bit of a train, which honestly, I like the feathers. I think they work. I think they're cool. I think they're chic. I don't think they compete too, too much with what's going on in the sequin rest of the dress area. Do I like the neck? line one sleeve thing no just because it's a personal thing as it doesn't do it for me i don't really understand it but do i think that the fit is good do i think the feathers are okay yes and like this is the first time in a long time i'm like oh chloe bailey i don't hate this so like now as for hallie she is wearing a maison yeah yeah look as well it's a silver pleated or chenille i can't tell exactly what the fabric is to be completely honest but i actually do think the dress is nice. I think it's pretty simple in terms of it's draped and there's not really anything super duper convoluted about it, but I think the fact that it feels like a flowing cascade of mercury is really, really nice. I think the fact that we have gathered and textured bustier and then an asymmetrical diagonal drape in a similar manner that flows down the dress, it gives the whole thing a continuity. It's not trying to fight for attention, it's just letting the dress look nice. The same thing for Hallie. I feel like I have not seen too, too many good fashion moments. So like, I am happy for the Bailey sisters today because my eyes are not burning. Next up we have Divine Joy Randolph and I'm not exactly sure who she's wearing, but the look consists of a brown bustier with seems to be lace applique over top. And then it's some sort of pink sort of swag of fabric comes down and then creates the rest of the dress almost as an asymmetrical sort of detail that exposes corset or bustier underneath. And listen, do I think it's some radical over the top? Oh my God, memorable look. No, not really. But do think it's a great example of you can fit a dress to look nice to a plus size body it's not that hard because a lot of the time we see looks and I'm like there's no way you went to design school there's no way you've ever cut a pattern before because this is honestly atrocious I think this is a great example honestly of the fact that it looks nice. I think she looks great. Listen, do I want it to be more exciting and over the top and cool and fun and funky? Yeah, but like, it's also just nice to see a look that fits on a plus size person because I feel like very often we get hideous looks that don't fit. So in this moment, I'm just like, yay, more of this, please. Next up, we have Daisy Edgar Jones wearing Gucci. It is a sheer crystallized fishnet dress. So we can see that there's a sort of black fishnet and then there's a large and small crystal that go in sort of banded stripes. The dress does sort of stalag tight at the, the neck area, but it doesn't really stalag night at the hem. I'm gonna fucking roll today. My issue with the look is Yes, it's a sheer dress and it's crystallized and it's fishnet and there's like a nude bodysuit, which really isn't that good of a nude bodysuit. It just kind of feels... Eh. Like, I'm happy to see a nice sort of Gucci fishnet experience and a sheer dress and I love it and we're happy, but like, this feels a little bit plain Jane, a little bit blah, a little bit unmemorable, and that's my issue. Next up, we have Daniel Deadweiler wearing Versace from the fall 2023 collection that just happened in LA. It is a cocktail dress with a lot of gathering diagonally in and out, and there's a big sort of side sash bow ruffle kerfuffle sort of flowing out. It's not my favorite Daniel Deadweiler look. I think the color is great and the little spots I presume is like meant to imitate an animal and I've been like cycling through panther, jaguar, leopard, tiger, lion, giraffe, cow, and I can't figure out which one it is. In my head I'm like Dalmatian. But long story short, 
I just think the dress a little plain, which is fine. It's a cocktail dress with a ruffle, some gathering, and, and, a, and a print, and it's not really dynamic. I think the other issue is the silk gloves and the Tiffany blue. I don't think it's working. I don't, I just don't see her pairing. Like, I also just think the jewelry, it looks awkward on top of the gloves. And then the shoe choice, I just, I don't love the shoe choice either with it. I just think that the styling element of the look could have brought it up a bit in terms of excitement and intrigue. And in reality, I think it really weighs down a look that needed some help. Next up, we have Donald Glover, and he is wearing Alexander McQueen. Listen, it is a little jumpsuit that is meant to look like a double-breasted suit, so we can see at the top, it's cut in the style of a double-breasted suit. You have the sleeve, you have lapels, you have two buttons to sort of emphasize that, and it almost looks like the suit jacket is actually tucked into this high-waisted pair of front pleated pants. In reality, it's not. It's really a backless element with some hip cutouts, which I like. I think Donald Glover is going for it. It's a little bit weird. It's a little bit wacky. It's a little bit different. It's playing on this idea of traditional tailoring. It's very Alexander McQueen. I think it's brilliant. I think the wide leg pant is fun. I think it's funky. I think the black shoe works. Do I wish that it was maybe, you know, a little bit less wrinkly in the crotch area? Yes, but like he was sitting down. So I, I get it. I do wish that wrinkle release spray had been put on right before we got on the carpet. It's a little distracting. But besides that, I like the, the going out there, the trying something out of the box, the doing something a little weird, a little wacky, but the fact that it's in a nice sort of easy gray, I'm sure that it's very linen-y and comfortable, which explains a lot of the crinkle and the wrinkle. I think that adds to this idea of you can still sort of feel a little bit traditional, a little bit normal, but at the same time, you can also go out there a little bit, do something fun and funky and memorable and something that actually excites people because I know that this Donald Glover look excited people. Next up, we have Isa Gonzalez, and she is wearing Oscar de la Renta. This is a strapless blue drape dress that has a sort of smattering of little feathers on it. Now, from the tippity top, I love that jewelry. I love that big choker with the blue jewels in it. It's fun. It's cool. It's different. It's exciting. A little bit of a gather that goes horizontally along the sort of bust area, and then out from that flows a sort of vertical sort of drapery. It's actually a pretty sheer little fabric because we can see the leg outline underneath and we can see where the sort of slip dress underneath stops. I do think that a little bit more featherage would have went a long way or just cut the featherage all out. I don't think the in-between feathering where it's like, it's there, but like how noticeable is it or how unnoticeable is it? I think you either got to go for it or you got to not. It's very rare that a light smattering of feathers works. And I think the dress in and of itself, yes, is it simple? Yes, is it kind of cool and easy and slim and elegant and a very American sort of sportswear, clean, classic, minimal? Yeah, but it looks like it fits her really, really well. So like that kind of wouldn't have been that much of a problem. Love the jewelry. I do love the dress for the most part. I just think the feathers go for it or don't. Next up, we have Elizabeth Olsen. I don't know who she's wearing. And honestly, because I got so many comments about Elizabeth Olsen wearing she wants she at the actual Oscars. So I'm going to have to do an Oscars part two video later in the week. But we have to talk about this look. Now, she is wearing this black plunging dress. It tapers in around the knee area and flows out into a long little train. Nothing crazy in the train way. It's very sort of minimal and easy. The fit of it is okay. You know, at the waist, it's like fine. I'm not really obsessed with it. I think at the hips, it's okay too. It's just, I think also those straps are a little thick. They're just, they're kind of chunky. And I think that if you're going to do a, a strap that thick, do it in like a bottega y kind of way where there's a little bit of intrigue to it. It's it's pumped up or it's made of metal or leather or something, something to give it a little je ne sais quoi. I do think they're a little chunky there. Do I like the jewelry? Yeah, I do. I think it's fun. I think the fact that it has another piece that sort of flows down into the plunge is cool and different and exciting. I don't love it. I don't absolutely hate it. It's just kind of there. Next up, we have Emily Ratajkowski wearing Febin. Now, I don't know much about Febin, so I apologize, but she's wearing a sheer dress. It looks like it's a mesh, and it's some sort of reflective mesh to a degree. It's a turtleneck style with big, long sleeves, little finger, little fingerless elements in the glove area. It hits the floor, so it's a floor-length gown. She is not wearing a, a, a bra situation, so the girls are out, they're living their best lives. And then a pair of beige underwear that does not match her skin tone, and I say... Why could we not dye it to match your skin tone? Because it takes one out of the fantasy. That's my issue. People, 
I know that styles have a lot going on. I know that they have so much to do. I understand. There's an intern there. Just, just ask them to dye it. I do love the exciting element of the dress besides the whole, you know, everything kind of on display is the little sort of braids that run down. And they're not really braids. It looks almost like they're strings and it looks like it's kind of shoelace ties that are laced bing 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 some some may say oh it looks like baseball because you know how the baseball curvaceous kind of goes in like that the stitching on a baseball it's okay but again i don't think it really adds anything super duper amazing to the look do i wish maybe it contoured the body a little bit more yeah i do i understand that it's meant to sort of cover the nipple i also don't think that the shape of it necessarily it does all that much to really draw the eye to a focal point or to draw a new sort of idea of the body, et cetera, et cetera. I just don't think this is like Emily Radichkowski's best look. Next up, we have Emma Chamberlain, who is wearing a custom Knowles look. It's a London-based brand that is all about the sheer. And honestly, I think we don't really see a lot of Knowles red carpet, but when we do, it's, it's intriguing. Listen, it's a lot of sheer sort of fabric, so we have a little bit of a cold shoulder moment in this gown. It has a sort of high neckline, and it has long sleeves that cover the hands. We can see that it's obviously very, very sheer, but certain opaque elements come in, whether it is the sort of bra bandeau element, the waistband, the sort of more opaque skirt, but still that is sheer. I will say again, we're having an issue with like the underwear. I get it, but like we could just dye the underwear. I like, I don't understand why we're not doing that. Cause again, it just, it takes you out of the fantasy. I like the fact that there's a pant underneath with there being a skirt as well. I think that's really, really fun. I think it's really exciting. I think it adds a little bit more of an interesting dimension to it. And the fact that it's in the exact same fabric, that little sort of flare really goes a long way. Love it from the waist up. And I love it from the waist down. I just don't love the waist part. I understand why the band is meant to be there to cinch in the waist, but I think that it's just a little awkward in terms of placement. I think it's a little bit too noticeable because you're also trying, because we're also showing so much skin that it does sort of take away little elements. But honestly, besides that band, I think it's a fantastic look. I think Emma's pulling it off. I think the look in, in concept, in design, is honestly really amazing. I think it's fun. I think it's chic. I think it's a layered experience. I'm very happy with it for the most part. Next up, we have the Heim sisters. And first up, we're going to talk about Esty. She is wearing a full paillette black dress by Louis Vuitton. And it has a very large gold sequined belt that wraps around the stomach. Now, listen, what I will say is... While it's not my favorite Louis Vuitton look custom, I do think that it correlates to not the most recent Louis Vuitton collection, but the most recent collection before that. The whole collection was based on sort of exaggerating certain elements. A lot of it had to do with the luxury accessories, luxury sort of small goods like wallets, bags, and playing with them in terms of proportion. But I think honestly, the gold belt being in the gold sequins with the black paillettes being larger, I think it's fine. I think that the belt is large enough that it does sort of cinch in the waist without being awkward. I'm fine with this. Then have Alana in the middle and she is wearing what looks like a, a tweed made up of sequins and fabrics and all of that. It's a cocktail strapless dress in yellow with, you know, dashes of black and silver. It's fine, but is it really memorable? No, I, I don't think it's the best dress choice. And then finally, we have Danielle, who is wearing an asymmetrical black faux leather style dress. So we have a sort of trim of black faux leather. Then the leather comes in at the waist and sort of, again, moves in diagonally. But in between that and below that, we have a fully crystallized tiger motif of orange and black, which honestly, I think is actually kind of radiant. I think it's fun. I think it's something Nicolas Jasquier has been looking at and playing with over his time at Louis Vuitton. We could see that tiger motif sort of ride in. I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's different. I think it's a nice sort of, you know, look at Nicolas archive. And I think use and I think that the use of the crystals is kind of different for LV a little bit. And I'm okay with that. So two out of three for the Heim sisters. It's not that bad. Next up, we have Florence Pugh wearing Valentino. She's really going for a cape moment, which is very Valentino. I get it. I understand it. It's fine. I think that this look is much better than what she wore at the actual Oscars. Not that much better, but better. It's pretty much a black 
bra with the little sort of fabric flowers, which I do think is smart. I do think it's fun. I do think they're a little bit square looking, considering they're meant to be roses. And then a black slack. It's floor length. I like the cut of it. I think the wide leg element is good. It fits well. It hits the floor. It just touches the floor. I really like that. I think then adding on this big sort of cape in pink silk taffeta, it's okay. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just there. It does add a sort of, you know, gown dress effect without actually having to be a gown or a dress. So I respect that. It's definitely a little bit forward thinking, I would say, while still keeping in touch with Valentino house coats. I think it's okay. I'm not mad about it. I'm not obsessed with it. It's there. And that's okay. But I would like for me to be obsessed with Florence Pugh's fashion choices because I feel like I have been. But then also there are times where I have not been. And this is one of those times where I'm really not obsessed. Next up we have Gabrielle Union wearing Ralph Lauren. It's a plunging black dress that is fully crystallized or at least it's beaded because those black beads are very intriguing. I would say that, like the shape of them. You don't really see beads and crystals like that. It's usually like a bugle bead or it's usually a round rhinestone or something like that but I'm intrigued by these. Listen the cut of it is great. It fits her really really beautifully. It falls really really well. A Y shape that comes in right below the waist and then falls down in the front. It's Ralph Lauren. It's not really meant to be like radical and over the top and crazy and exciting. It's meant to be very clean and classic so I obviously wish that Ralph would do something a little bit crazier. Yeah absolutely 100% of course. But at the same time, it's American classic sportswear. I'm not gonna be mad about it. It's the same thing with like Saint Laurent or Celine. It's like, that's just what they do. So as long as it fits well, as long as it fits in with the proportions of what's expected, I'm fine with this. Gigi Hadid, Zach Posen. Whew. <laughs> Hot girl. So Gigi is wearing a custom Zach Posen off the shoulder red gown. I mean, listen, let's let's break this puppy down because it needs to be. First things first, shout out to Gigi for wearing Zach Posen because we don't really get to see a lot of Zach Posen all that much anymore. Evidently, Gigi knows what she's doing. Great taste. Very big fan. Thank you, queen. So she's wearing this little red number. It's fully pleated in this beautiful manner. I mean, even just the shading of it, like the way that there's a sort of curvaceous arch around the stomach and then fits in the waist perfectly. Like it's beautifully made. Like it, it fits her like a glove. And then as we move up, we can see that those sort of stripes run along, you know, the stripes of the pleating is what I mean, not like actual stripes. We can see that the fabric also sort of does texturize itself on the sleeves as well, which I really, really love. And there's an intriguing element about the end of the sleeve is that normally with a sleeve maybe you'd have cut out of like an arch shape on the top of the hand for some reason the cut in the bottom of the hand and I kind of like that maybe it's not practical but I don't really care you're not gonna wear a Zach Posen gown because oh my god it's practical you're gonna wear a Zach Posen gown because it's gonna be like a goddamn fucking Charles James creation baby girls it is about a moment you understand you are a fashion girl you are letting an artist work on your body Okay, so I love that little detail. She's beautiful. Listen, I love Zach Posen. Like, if you get to spend time with those dresses ever, it's stunning. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Like, since he's sort of riding a little bit more solo, he's putting even more work into these gowns, which is amazing. Then the skirt in and of itself, one straight seam that runs down the front of the dress, and then those beautiful pleats just sort of line up and create a gorgeous, gorgeous girl shape. The way that it hits the floor is just magnificent. Like, this is a masterclass in making goddamn clothing. You know what I mean? Like, that's what this is. Read them and weep, Gigi Hadid, one of the best dress of the night. Shout out to her, shout out to Zach, shout out to everybody that made this happen. I love you all. Next up we have Hailey Bieber wearing Saint Laurent. I believe that this is a custom look. It's pretty much a fitted gown, floor length, big shoulder pad, papered in as we get towards the hem, hippage going on, full gloved sleeve on one side and then on the other which is really the side of like very much so interest. Whereas we have what looks like a sort of stretch material and it's very sort of matte. On the other side, it's very silky, it's reflective, it has a big bow. There's a line that sort of runs right down on the side. And then there's a sleeve that's slashed that in reality, when Haley puts her arm there, it becomes a floor length sash slash sleeve. Say that three times fast. I'll be completely honest, 
I almost like wish that the bow and the sleeve was on the other side as well. I understand doing like a one side, one side. It seems like that's really big right now, or at least like between the Oscars and the Vanity Fair after party. I think that one side of it is great. Like the bow and the slash sleeve and the silk element, I think is really nice. I think it's really fun. I think it's great. And I do like the fact that there's a matte barrier against it I think it enhances it more I just also think though like it's very apparent on the other side where that strong shoulder is it's a shoulder pad and then her arm sort of creeps underneath and I don't love that the fit of it's like okay it's fine but it's easier to notice that it's it's a little bit crinkle and sort of bunchy I would say it's more bunchy than crinkle I think that the length of it is fine again I like one element of it I think it's a nice element I just wish that it was symmetrically nice. Next up we have Halle Berry. She's wearing a very A-line sheer pony hair dress with lots of bows on it by Oscar de la Renta. I do not like this dress. I'm very sorry. I do not like it at all. I think that the length of it is kind of awkward and I again think the shoe choice is not great. A-line strapless, I also don't really love all that much. I think there needs to be something on the shoulders to sort of even it out. Otherwise, it looks like a napkin. It's just not a great dress. You know what I mean? Like, I like the fact that Oscar is doing their little pony hair moment. I think that's fine. I think the bows with the sequins on it, I don't think it really helps because I don't think you really can tell what they are unless you, like, really are looked. And I don't think that's great either. I think the styling of it is also not great. I just think the shoe is not amazing. Uh, maybe like a boot, maybe something a little bit more dynamic would have worked, but like the trapezoid shape is just awkward. It's just, I don't want to look at it anymore. It's making me feel uncomfortable. And that's really hard to say when I'm talking about Halle Berry, okay? Next up, we have Halsey wearing Givenchy. It's a bateau neckline dress with a sharp, kind of pronounced shoulder ruched right down the front. There's a full sleeve with a zipper on the sleeve in the front of the sleeve. And I don't know why we did that. I know that Matthew Williams is very sort of hardware oriented, but I feel like the zipper could have went on the inside here. I don't love it. I don't. It's very simple. And that's very Givenchy. One of the last couturiers, you know, oh, listen, I get it. You know, you're talking to me. But I just don't think it's that great. I don't think it really is memorable. I like a bateau neckline, you know what I mean? Love that. But I also don't think the rest of the dress fits with the bateau neckline in a way that like works. Yeah, unfortunately I don't love this. I don't I don't really get it. Next up we have Hilary Duff, Dolce and Gabbana, a little strapless moment. It's a lace sheer bodice. We can see that there's silk sort of laying over top of the boning. I just hate when they put like the strips of where the boning would go in the cup, like over the dry. I hate it. I think it's so ugly. I, I don't know why they do it. I think they did that with Haley Bailey yesterday at the Oscars or whenever the Oscars was. I don't know why they're trying to make that happen because it's not gonna happen, Gretch. The color I think is cute. It's not really interesting lace either. It just feels a little bit cream puff couture and like the couture part was really generous of me. It's like whatever, it's not memorable. And that makes me sad because like Hilary Duff should be, you know, Hillary definite out, Lizzie McGuire. Where are the fashion PR gays handling these things, please? Next up, we have Hong Chao wearing a sleeveless black gown by Maison Rabi K. Ruse. I kind of like this one. I think the fact that it's all about the drape is smart. I like the fact that it has a high neckline. The element of the sleevelessness, I think it's cool. We have a diagonal drape that goes along the bust, and then as we get to the waist, it's much, much more horizontal. And then in reality, it's a lot tighter. So it does sort of bring in the waist a little bit. And then as we get to the hip area, it goes back to being sort of diagonal. There's a little slit and she's wearing a boot. Hong Chao. She is the woman of my dreams. I love her. I would die for her. She's amazing. She is a fashion icon. We just love, we love a knee high, almost a knee high boot. You know what I mean? Like that's rare. I think this is a great example of doing a black dress that's very simple and easy and wonderful and elegant and effortless. I think the texture is great. I think that it fits her beautifully. It's lovely. It's easy. It's nice. It's cool. It's a cool way to do an LBD. Next up, we have Hunter Schaefer, who is wearing Anne de Moulemeester by Ludovic de Saint-Cernin. This is a look from the most recent Anne de Moulemeester collection, which was Ludovic's debut. And this little look, a lot of people are very upset about, which, but Ludovic's whole thing is like bearing the body, very much so. But what Ludovic also did is reference a lot of Anne de Moulemeester styles from the past, 
but did it in his way. And I'll be completely honest, I'm not an Andy Mister archive girly. So like, I really can't speak to whether or not the references are great or not. It's, just, it's not my thing, you know what I mean? I know like one sixth of the Antwerp six. Probably could name like four of them. But it's just, it's not for me. This feather sort of bra, <laughs> very loose loose bra, a belt with a, a white feather over top of it. I like it. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. Hunter Schaefer chose it. Hunter Schaefer wanted to wear it. Like it's not like it was forced upon her. I think it's cool. I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. Top boob, side boob, under boob, all the boobs, they're all there. Then we have a low slung white silk skirt. And like, it's a nice skirt. You know what I mean? Like I'm not mad about the skirt either. It is most definitely an Andy Mulamister reference. It's just a different take on it, which is what happens with brands. I like it. I think it's fun. I think that Hunter usually goes for something, does show a lot of body. She's not afraid to do it. It's something that she often does. And so like, I, I like it. I think it's fun. And I think that that's what the Vanity Fair after party is about, especially for the people that weren't at the Oscars. If you're at the Oscars, could be better, but I get it. But for people not, it's like, Show up, show up, go for it, do it. And Hunter likes to cause a little controversy. She's a fashion girl, she gets it. Next up we have Iris Apatow and she is wearing designer Colin Locasio. Now this is a pretty simple fitted gown. It's a, I'm gonna call this like a copper sequin. And then it has little flowers all over it. They're all little crystallized flowers in blue and pink and green and violet and icy blue and all those sorts of things. It's not my favorite dress, but do I think for a young designer, does it fit well? Yeah. Do I think that the, the floor length element is okay? Yeah. I Do I like seeing cool young designers that we don't get to often see on the red carpet on the red carpet? So yes, I do. And I appreciate Iris for doing that. I'm sure Colin also does. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's the first time on the carpet or at least on the hollow mode carpet. I'm intrigued, but I'd like to see more. I'd like to see where else it goes. But honestly, for a first showing, it's not that bad at all. Next up we have Janelle Monae wearing Area. This is a custom look, but it's based on the most recent collection. In reality, it is a halter style in sheer, which has some sort of black bubbles all over it. And that covers sort of the, the breast area. There is a skirt that has hip cutouts and then it has a ruched sort of front area then comes down into a mermaid sort of silhouette, big long train. Listen, is it my favorite look ever? No, but do I think it's different and intriguing? Do I think that it's what Janelle Monae is sort of going for a little bit more recently, which is like showcasing the body. It's in her signature color, which is black. I like it. I don't love it. I like it. It's fine. Then we had Jennifer Connelly wearing Louis Vuitton. This is a custom style. It's a black bandeau with a sort of tank dress. I'm pretty positive that this is some sort of embroidery or something that makes up that sort of silver. And then it seems to be sheer and it seems that the tank dress is held together with mesh in between those little strands, which I think is fun and different and cool. I guess it's not that different, but it's definitely fun. The motif in and of itself, not really dynamic, not really super memorable, but I also thought the Jennifer Connelly Oscars moment was great. So like, okay, it's fine gets a pass. Then we had Jennifer Coolidge who came out and wore Dolce & Gabbana. She's wearing a very draped sort of look, cold shoulder, it's coming back. Be prepared people. There's some ruching at the bust area. There's a little bit of horizontal pulling and gathering at the waist. I don't think it really makes sense where they did the placement of the texture, to be completely honest. Cause then right below where the waist is texturized, it's untexturized and then it starts back up again and I don't really get it. And then the part where you have the hard hit of like the vertical rest of the skirt versus the horizontal element of the skirt right at the knee. It's just like really awkward and weird and I like don't understand why. Again, nobody else is dressing Jennifer Coolidge. Jesus, these gays, they're trying to kill me via fashion. Then we had Jodie Turner Smith, always a good one, wearing custom Gucci. She is wearing this crystal encrusted, it's kind of like a Harlequin look because you have panels of what looks to be lace and then panels of black velvet. And I love it. I think it's fun. I think it's cool. Love a Harlequin moment, never hurts. And also usually with Harlequin moments, it's usually about the color. It's a different sort of shades or different sort of colors that go against each other. It's very rarely sort of about the fabric and the textile that's going and sort of juxtaposing against each other. So like Jody's Turner Smith, 
always like 17 steps ahead. The red velvet sort of bra element I think is okay. I'm not mad about it. I like it. I think it's cool. And I do think that while the crystals on the actual dress look a little bit messy, they do at the waist area that they, they look messy. There's like some of them that look out of place and I don't really understand. I do like at least the fact that it sort of curves and that helps again to accentuate the waist. It's smart. It's easy. I do think that there's like some actual technical issues in, in this area that Gucci needs to figure out there because it doesn't make sense. But I do love the Harlequin element. I do think that Jodi always goes for it. And I think that honestly, for the most part, she always delivers. And I think this is another example of like, put a star next to her name. Next up, we have Joe Jonas wearing Louis Vuitton. It's a custom look. It's a velvet smoking jacket with silk lapels and silk sort of lining cuffs. We can see that there's little embroideries of flowers and sequins that are crystallized, which is cute and nice and fun. I like the pants. I like the fact that there's also the crystals on the pants and the flower detail. I think it's fun. It cuts in. It helps to shape the leg just a little bit. And then you have a sort of simple, I believe like a slippery shoe. I don't love the slippery shoe, but at least there's like the velvet and leather. There's the shine and the sort of velvety area, which I think correlates back to the lapels and the actual blazer that's in this velvet. As menswear goes, I'm into it. It's fine. It's good. I'll take this. We then had Julia Garner in an off-white look. Normally, Julia is kind of a little bit extravagant, so I'm intrigued by this. There is a hoop sort of crystal detail, and then it's a fitted sheer-ish floor-length dress with a little bit of a mermaid cut. Not super dramatic mermaid. I think she's just like posing that way. What I will say is that this is from Off-White's most recent collection, Fall 2023. When you put a side-by-side -side of Julia Garner and Naomi Campbell wearing the dress, Julia Garner is not, you know, beaten out by Naomi. And I think that deserves a small clap because, you know, you put a picture of me and Naomi next to each other. Do you think that the halter hoop tubing detail is cool and fun and I think it's simple. It's meant to be sheer. So like, I get it. It's fine. I'm into it. I like it. It's cool. I'm okay with it. And last but not least of part one is Kaya Gerber in Celine and Austin Butler in Saint Laurent. Let's talk about Austin Butler first. The Saint Laurent suit, black suit, black pant. But what I will say is at least the man put on a goddamn pussy bow blouse. Finally. Austin, you can let your hair down. It's over. I do love this gray silk pussy bow blouse. I do think that it pays a great homage to Yves Saint Laurent who sort of reinstituted the pussy bow blouse after the likes of Coco Chanel brought it and sort of popularized it back in the 1930s and Yves Saint Laurent brought it back in the 1970s. I think maybe the 60s too. But I like that the, the pant and the shoe and the boot, uh, I'll take it, it's fine. There's a pussy bow blast there, whatever, good, thank you. As for Kaya, it's a little simple on the Celine front. I know that it is Celine, I know that it's meant to be simple. I do wish there was a little bit more pizzazz to it, to be completely honest. It's a keyhole cutout halter style and silver sequins with a slit. I think that there's a lot of people you could put that on and it's like, fine, great. I think that Kaya, a big Celine girl, a real sort of staple of the brand under Eddie Slaman, could be a little bit more punchy, a little bit more exciting, a little bit more, oh my God. I want a little bit more from Kaya and Celine in that, that context. So that is the end of part one of this video. I got a prepare my body mentally and emotionally and physically because we're going to be talking about Jenner's. So let's talk about best and worst quickly. Best, I'm going to give it to Ana de Armas on there because I like that. Billie Eilish. I'm going to put Gigi Hadid. Loved, loved, loved. Oh, Jodie Turner-Smith. Loved, loved, loved. As for worst, Daisy Edgar-Jones. Just like, ma. Angela Bastian, I'm sorry. It's not my fault, okay? It's not my fault. Don't blame me. Adding into best, also like Donald Glover. I'm gonna add in, also adding in Alton Mesa. Hilary Duff in the Dolce, I was just like, why? Halsey and Givenchy, why? Jennifer Coolidge, why? Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys for part two. It's coming, I promise. I will speak to you soon, and TTY, well.